Welcome biologists to part two of spec point C from classification and evolution. In the first video here we looked at the features in the different kingdoms we need to be aware of. In this video we're going to focus on the evidence that scientists use to classify organisms into groups based upon the similarities and differences. So we look at these different cats here we can tell that they're all different um, they're different species and we can tell that because of their observable features. We can physically see that the physical features are different within those cats and you can do the same here within these whales and dolphins so we can group them in a phylogenetic tree like this phylogenetic tree shows the evolutionary relationships and we can do that based upon their observable features so you can see here that the fin whale and the humpback whale are grouped more closely together than the other three here due to the observable features the physical features in how they appear to be as well as physical features or observable features, we can also use DNA. Now, what we're looking for here in DNA is to see if the base sequence of DNA is similar or not. Now, if the base sequence is similar between different organisms, this means that they're more closely related than if the DNA base sequence was more different from each other. So if you look at the whales and the dolphins here, you can see here that the humpback whale and the sperm whale have a similar base sequence. So therefore, we can say that they're more closely related than what we originally thought based upon their just their observable features. So it means we can rejig that phylogenetic tree there to demonstrate that the sperm whale is actually more closely related to these other whales based upon the DNA as well as the observable features. So DNA is really good. Um, for allowing us to compare in those DNA sequences and allowing us to see how closely related individuals are or not. Another thing we can use is the biochemistry of proteins, such as cytochrome C. Cytochrome C is used in respiration, but we can also use RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase is a very popular one on the MART schemes as well. Now, for this one, we're not looking at base sequences. Don't get confused between the two. For DNA, we look at base sequences, but for proteins, we're looking at amino acid sequences. Do not get confused between the DNA and the proteins. So here for proteins, I can see the amino acid sequence, to see if it's similar or different from other organisms, and that will tell me if they're closely related or not. So the more similar the amino acid sequences are, the more closely related the individuals will be. So here's the, it's a bit more on a cytochrome C. And the amino acid sequences, as I've just mentioned then, it allows you to have a look to see the more differences between the base sequence, sorry, the sequence of amino acids, the, the less closely related the, the species are going to be. We can also look at ribosomal RNA. Now, this isn't as popular on the um, MARC scheme, this one. Um, so I'll briefly look over this. Um, so the next one we need to know about is behaviour. So, for example, do they have similar feeding habits or predatory behaviours or courtship behaviours? For example, um, the birds of paradise have certain courtship behaviours and they differ between different species. So this allows, it's another tool that scientists can use to classify organisms into groups or different species. So that's everything we need to know there about how um, scientists can use different pieces of evidence to classify organisms into groups based upon similarities and differences. Now, let's have a look at an exam question. Um, so here we must be underlining and highlighting keywords within the question. So we're looking at what criteria for this one and then for classifying. So we're going to pause the video and have a go at doing this exam question. You can do so now. But here's the mark scheme for this. So as you can see, the, the key bits of information there, which get you the majority of the marks. So guys, good luck with your exams. In this one, don't forget, don't confuse DNA and the base sequences with proteins and amino acid sequence. Guys, good luck with your exams and all the best with your studies.